Megan Huber, and I'm your host, Samantha Stone, and I'm excited because the election series that we did was incredibly fun and I hope useful. I got lots of notes and chats from folks who said that it really helped them decide on who they were going to vote for. Um, but we're back to our regularly scheduled program, and that makes me very, very happy. Um, we have, as always, Mayor Scott Galvin, who's going to be joining us. We're going to do um, some general city updates. I've got lots of questions that folks have asked. We've missed you, Scott, and uh, there's lots of new stuff to chat about. And then we have some special guests um, who are going to be talking with us, Anthony and um, City Councilor Jeff Dillon. Anthony, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, so you're going to tell me in a couple of minutes when I bring you on. You're going to correct it for me so I don't completely mess it up. Um, and Gabriel's here as well. And so we've got lots of good stuff that we're going to be talking about today. Welcome, Scott. Hey, hey uh, Samantha, how are we doing? Good. Uh, first of all, congratulations on your win. I don't know if you're breaking any Woburn records for longest run um, mayor, but we're we're glad to have you back. Good. It's good to be here. Thank you for the, uh, yeah, and it was a, a good win. We're really happy with it and looking to get back to work. You know, uh, a lot of great things happening and, uh, you know, particularly, you know, COVID seems to be uh, getting to that point, you know, where we're uh, getting more people vaccinated every day. And, uh, you know, Pfizer came out with great news about their pill to, to uh, you know, lessen the impact for those who actually get it. So I, I feel really good about the direction we're heading. And, uh, you know, we've got uh, the 5 to 11 group that just, you know, last week were approved by, um, you know, CDC to get vaccinated. And we're going to start with a clinic on the 20th. So we're excited about that. We've got, we're in the plant, the, uh, I say initial stages, but we've got the uh, clinic's going to be set up for um, Saturday, November 20th. And we're looking to do it at the high school. So we're excited about that. And we're, you know, excited to get more of our students vaccinated. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, that is a great Thanksgiving gift for families to, to be able to do that before the holidays. So, um, and that was going to be one of my first questions. So you read my mind. Uh, yep. That was uh, certainly top of folks' mind. I appreciate that. We also have Veterans Day on Thursday. Um, and I know we as a city always um, do lots of things to recognize and celebrate folks who have sacrificed through their service. If, um, I don't know if you want to give a quick update about what we have planned for Thursday. Yeah, that, that's another one. That's a, that'll be the uh, first, I think it's our first, well, no, it's our second parade, but this, you know, it's a, it's a smaller parade, but it's a, you know, it's a really uh, important parade on Veterans Day. It'll be starting at 1030 down at the Winchester Woburn line on Cross Street. So it's a little longer um, than the Memorial Day service, but uh, it's a great, uh, it's gonna be a great day starts at 1030. Um, and, uh, you know, what better way uh, to recognize your veterans like we always do in Woburn uh, with a parade. So it starts at 1030, then it'll make its way down to the common. And Anthony Langone, uh, your, your guest, he's, uh, I want to thank him for his service. He's an uh, Air Force veteran. So Anthony, thanks for your service too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're thrilled to have you, Anthony, and really grateful to all the veterans um, who have served our community and all around the world where they have served. I'm glad we'll be doing something. And for those who are newer to Woburn and haven't participated, um, uh, we it's a really lovely opportunity to just stand and um, sort of recognize people along the parade route. It isn't as big and um, long as the Halloween parade, so uh, but it is a, a lovely service that we do. And then there'll be some, um, there's usually some talk in, in Woburn center is that happening this year as well yeah so at 11 o'clock there'll be you know uh larry giuseppe george Poole, uh and a few others will say some words and then at 11 11 uh you know they'll do the taps and all that stuff so it's a, it'll be it's a, it starts it'll make its way and start at 11 o'clock in the common usually lasts about a half an hour joanne campbell sings a few songs we have the woman high school band so it's nice and you know, some of the uh, younger groups get involved, um, Samantha, which is important. You know, the, I think the Girl Scouts, the, you know, the Boy Scouts, or the Cub Scouts, and some of the school groups get there. So it's nice to have the younger, um, younger students there to acknowledge the veterans, too. I love it. And for those just sort of operationally, that means we don't have trash pickup in city. The city hall is closed on Thursday. Trash will be picked up on Friday for Thursday. And then is it Friday delivery on Saturday? Is that how yep. it works? Yeah, one day off. Good. Thanks for reminding. Uh, Diane in my office is actually preparing that, but yeah, that, that's a good point. There'll be a one day delay. Yeah. Um, and while and you mentioned it, while you mentioned it, this is the week, the first week of, not the first week, one of the, this is a leave, a leave pickup week for everybody. 
across the city. So I'll try to get your leaves out. I know there'll be a couple more between now and Christmas, but uh, this is the, I call it the first one, but it's, it's, you know, one of multiples we do in the fall. Yeah, I'm really grateful to have that. There's a lot of leaves down. We've had a windy few weeks, and so there's a lot of, lot of cleanup to get done. And um, a future guest that we're having in December, I'm actually very excited that someone from Waste Management is going to join us because we always have lots of questions about what's pickup, what can be recycled, what can't. And, and so Good. I'm thrilled that we're going to have somebody on uh, in a few weeks to chat through that with us. So um, I'm thrilled. You ran in the race this weekend, right? The, the Boys and Girls Club? The Boys Club. That's a good one. That's the kicking for kids. And uh, they usually do that in May, Samantha, but uh, because of uh, COVID, they had to they had to cancel it. And it was a great turnout uh, for a great cause, obviously. And uh, there was between the walkers and runners, there were over 300 people. Uh, they, they raised a, a good amount of money and uh, it was a great turnout. Jeff was there too. He was there with his wife. Jeff, he's always at every event, but uh, it was nice to run. I, I did pretty, pretty well. A couple, yeah. It was, it, was, it was fun I like, time. I like that you get a little competitive spirit there. That's yeah. uh, that's healthy. I, I think it's great. I saw lots of, um, I, I, I was building a pantry wall, which is far less exciting than participating in the run. Um, but I was uh, really glad to, to see so many folks who had gone out to support. What a great cause. So thanks. Great. It was a great cause. Great time. Great cause. So we had um, elections. Um, it feels like a life to go, I'm sure, because everybody's back to um, new business. But we do have um, they were very recent and we have two new city councilors who will be joining us when um, the term uh, comes up, if I'm correct. And I'm just curious, I um, what's the process? Like, how do you get to know them? What's the way that we as a city welcome them and get them up to speed for their important new job? Well, you know, I have to say it's a little bit trial by fire, you know, Samantha, they get in there and uh, the councils, the veteran councils will take them under their wing. I'll have a meeting with uh, both of them uh, just to, you know, kind of go over some of the, um, you know, the do's and don'ts to, to make things a little, uh, you know, the transition for them into a new position more, uh, go a little smoother. Uh, the city clerk also sits down with them and provides them, provides both of them with a copy of the city charter. That's the, you know, the constitution for the city, the municipal code, the zoning code, and, uh, you know, just a few of the, the uh, Roberts rules, which is something that takes a little bit of getting used to. And, and, you know, Ed Tedesco, the president who was leaving, he's going to be missed for that. He was, he was the chief parliamentarian. He was very good with that and uh, they'll miss him for that. But this, you know, this veteran council will step right up and, and uh, fill the void. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll, it's a, it's a little bit of a learning curve. Some of the councils in, in the past come out a little stronger and, and some, you know, they'll sit back and watch for a couple months, which is probably, my advice is that you kind of, uh, you know, you you watch how how, how the process goes, and you and you uh, and you learn a little bit, and then you're you're ready to to get right into it. But it takes a, it's a little bit of a learning curve, and I think Jeff will Jeff will uh, confirm those uh, feelings. But they'll do well. They're both, you know, they're both, uh, you know, they got into it. They knew what they were getting into, and they're and they're both going to do very, very well for their woods. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, you know, we have time before they take on the role. They don't officially take on the new role until January. Is that correct? January. It's the uh, first, the uh, inauguration will be the first Monday in January. Uh, so, you know, I don't know when, after New Year's, so it's the first whatever, Monday. After, whatever that, yeah, after New Year's is. Um, well, I'm sure you, yeah, I'm sure you, um, like me, you know, want to thank everyone who ran, those who won, those who didn't. But, you know, they start everyone starts really important conversations by participating in the process. And we're lucky that we had so many people across the city who cared um, and and, you know, put their passions towards serving us. And, and for those who didn't win, I'm sure we'll find ways for them to serve our community. As Absolutely. Community. Yeah. Good point, Samantha. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Um, one last little election thing. So I had a few people this morning send me a note. Um, I'm not actually sure what spurred it this morning, maybe a post in Woburn resident groups. Um, on election, or maybe the day before election day, there was a text that came out that was looked like it came from your campaign to um, you know remind people about voting and, and such, which is sort of a normal marketing. As a marketer, I yeah. see those things happen all the time and there's lots of services, but folks were a little bit confused about what that was and where it came from. So I wanted to give you the opportunity to just clarify that for people. Uh, I, I, I'm, I th I'm, the text came from my campaign. It was a uh, paid, like anything, like paid marketing. They're, they're very common. Um, it's on my campaign finance disclosure, the cost that 
the cost uh, to do it, to, to pay for the list. So it's on my campaign finance report. Anybody who wants to look at it can certainly look at it. Yeah. And just so folks, you know, it, it doesn't mean that they're on some secret list, right? There are um, uh, resident lists available for campaigns and other purposes that right. can be applied. Right? Go build a list. You know, I think everybody, uh, I don't want to say everybody, but they're very common. You get the vote builder list from, uh, you know, again, that was something that's on my campaign finance report um, and anybody can see it. So we had two different uh, expenses, but yeah. Great. Thank you for Public clarifying. Records. And, and anybody, actually, Samantha, if anybody does want to call me uh, to ask any questions, they should call me instead of making assumptions because somebody did give me the feedback. Uh, and people sometimes jump to assumptions instead of just picking up the phone, which is really the easy thing to do, um, yeah. instead of be, taking a passive aggressive approach on uh, Facebook. So, again, well, I'm glad we were able to clear it up. I want to um, thank. Thanks for 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 doing that. And but if you know, if you happen to know who they are, have them call me. They can even stop yeah. down at City Hall if they'd like to talk to me. Yeah, absolutely. There was a, a few folks. I'll always drop them a note, and I always send them a link to this, so they'll. That'd be good. Yeah. Your your interest in doing that, which I'm sure they'll they'll take up if they have any more questions. So excellent. Um, awesome. Um, we have. Um, that's the. Qu I'm just looking through to see if there was anything else. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is we have parking ban that's starting November fifteenth for even side of the street. And I know that, you know, it hasn't snowed yet, but this is really to help make sure that the roads can be cleared during winter storms. That's right. And then if there is, if this, yeah, so it's always that side of the street you can't park on during the winter months. And then, you know, as as we say, during the, during real snowstorms, we just, if there is a, a total parking ban, we'll send out the notice and let people know. Excellent. Anything else you want to um, mention before we talk about um, the great stuff going on with the, the housing and support. No, workshop. no, that's good. We're looking forward to Saturday. Looking forward to the uh, the workshop. Great work by uh, Rep. Agaty, uh, Anthony Langone, and Jeff Dillon for for uh, really spearheading this, and I'm uh, looking forward to participating. Yeah, I'm really excited, and I um, should let you know, Scott, too. I got a, a call from my mom this morning about the uh, gun violence vigil and your participation in that. Is always. Yeah. Um, she and the community are grateful for that. We'll we'll provide some more details as we get closer. Yeah, that, that's that's gonna that's good. And, you, and your mother does a fantastic job. And uh, you know, uh, Jamel, uh, you know, really needs the community support. Uh, you know, every day. So, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me me too. So um, thanks as always for joining us, um, Jeff and Anthony. Thank you for coming on. They've got some great resources that we're going to be talking about. That is sort of a collaborative effort across things. Anthony, this is your chance. Tell me how to pronounce pr pronounce your last. I can't even say pronounce. How to properly pronounce your last name? I appreciate it, Samantha. No, it's Langone. Um, the Italians might say it's you know pronounced different, but Langone is what I'm going with. So. <laughs> The Italian in me wanted to say something different. I'm glad I asked. So uh, wel welcome to the show and welcome so Jeff, uh, Dylan for joining me. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you to you, Wuban Public Media for helping us get the word out. Uh, what people should realize too, Samantha, is you not only do this service, but you're a great asset to our community. I'm out there at many of the different community events and fundraisers. And guess who I always see? You out there as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm blushing. I don't know if it's coming through on the Zoom, but um, it's the least I can do is I get to come on and ask questions. And I'm really grateful for, for everyone who joins me and is so open and transparent. I think it's a really important part of our um, our community is being able to, um, is, and we may be a city, but we're, we're a city that's small enough to have you both come on and chat with us and at every event. And um, I'm really appreciative of that. So thanks for the kind words, Jeff. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you. So I wanna, um, what you guys have coming up is a really important service to the community. And one of the things that I'm gonna ask viewers to do, I don't, off, I don't actually know that I've done this before at all, but I'm gonna ask it maybe for the first time. Now, I really want those of you who are watching this to share it with folks who might need the service because my biggest fear is the people who can most need the help in terms of housing security and food assistance and some other services that we're gonna talk about today are not watching this. Um, and I wanna make sure if you know someone who could be um, served by any of the things that are happening, please, please, please let them know about it and help spread the word. Um, so why don't we just sort of start with an overview, Anthony, about um, what we have coming up, where it is, when it is, and what our hope is. 
Of course. So I just want to thank uh, Councilor Dillon. He's the one who put this on our radar. I know he had done something, I think, up in Lowell. Um, and it was just, I think the timing is, is right. You know, our, our office, uh, Representative Haggerty, um, you know, we, we've been hearing a lot about, you know, people that are just having trouble paying their bills right now, people that are facing eviction after the moratorium and things like that. And it, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. A lot of people don't know where they can go. So our, what we've been trying to do is just trying to get the word out. You know, we, I know Jeff and I have been running around the city, putting flyers out, talking to local businesses, trying to do a promotion on social media, the community forums, uh, just to try to get this thing off the ground. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to do it without the uh, partnership of Mayor Galvin, State Rep Haggerty, Councilor Dillon, uh, SCI Woburn, and just some of our community partners. Uh, everyone's been great. So, and the key thing is just to get uh, housing resources uh, out there for the community. Great. And Jeff, tell us, we are going to be in one of your favorite spots in the city, correct? It's going to be at the library? We absolutely are going to be at the library in the uh, downstairs room. Easy to access. You can either come to the main lobby and take the elevator or stairs down, or you can come right down to the back way as well. Plenty of parking. And yeah, spot on. My One of my favorite uh, places to hang out and move in, and I, that maybe that makes me sound old, but I, I love it there. Oh, I, it doesn't make you sound old. It makes you sound smart, I think. I think hanging out in the library, <laughs> doesn't that make you feel smarter already? Um, Jeff, for those who, um, we'll have the information on, but remind us the date and time as well. Sure. It's this Saturday, and it's from 9 to 11. And um, again, one of the questions I know that came up is just what does RAF stand for? Stands for Residential Assistance for Families in Transition. What does that cover? It covers a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna hit a couple and I'm gonna let Anthony who will go a little further into it. But in my own everyday work business as a property manager and real estate development, we often come upon it's a problem of, with a tenant that's not paying rent. And unfortunately, without this program, it's either the tenant pays rent or gets evicted. In this particular case, this is a win-win for both the tenant and the landlord. So I'm gonna focus a little bit on the landlord because he's gonna get paid. And again, it helps preserve homes for people. Uh, there's also a program that if the people stop by, they can help behind in their mortgages as well. Um, there's if you talk to my wife, there's few things that keep me up at night. I sleep really well, but the thought of somebody losing their apartment or home or going hungry, it just shouldn't happen in today's world. So this is just our way of trying to reach out and you hit the nail on the head, Samantha. How do we get to the people, what I call the forgotten population? The people that maybe have a language barrier or don't have the internet or just not in the mainstream that really need some help. So from the bottom of my heart, I ask for everybody to reach out to anyone you think that's in need to stress to them. This is gonna be a great source of information and help for people that really need some help. And it's all going to be there. I'm going to turn it over to Anthony. He's going to carry it a little further, some of the programs there. Of course. So we're going to have some great partners. We're going to have Metro Housing Boston. They've been a great resource for us and really our community in general. Um, basically, we're going to have caseworkers on scene. They're going to have someone that speaks Spanish as well uh, for anyone that needs translation services. They will help you if someone wants to come in and actually file a raft application or SNAP benefits uh, for food assistance. They will do that with you. Uh, if you're just coming in to stop by, um, you want to just grab some programs, grab, you know, understand some of the resources available to you, you can do that too. It's really just a one-stop shop where we have the experts in the room. You can get the help you need. And um, that is really what we're trying to do here. Um, we're also going to have with SCI Woober, and I believe they're going to have a Portuguese um, translator as well on scene. So we're really trying to reach uh, these forgotten populations in Woburn and get the word out on that. And um, I think it's going to be a great event. Um, there's going to be heating assistance information. I believe MassSave just contacted us today. They want to provide some pamphlets for this as well. Um, so we're really going to have a lot of things in the room. So really looking forward to it. I, I love it. So I just want to go through this. This is really important. So heating assistance, food assistance, housing assistance. Um, this is really helpful. If you're a landlord and you have tenants who are struggling, 
it is in um, both a human and wonderful thing to do to help them, but also in your best interest to help them because it can provide payment for you as well. So um, if you're if you're a landlord, make sure to help those who might need some assistance help there. Anthony, one of the things that we're always sensitive about is confidentiality um, because these are personal matters for for individuals. Um, how if they are filling out applications and things, how will we make sure that they have whatever privacy they may or may not want? If they don't want privacy. That's fine. But if they do, will there be accommodations for that? I believe so. We're going to set up tables there. Um, we're going to try to set them off, I think, to the side in case they want to go over there to fill out any information. Uh, we're not going to have any particular sign in. If people just want to stop in to grab resources, you know, we're not trying to put their names or have people show IDs or anything like that. Um, with our some of these professional case workers that are going to be there, this is their job. You know, they will keep their information, you know, uh, lock, lock tight. Uh, they'll keep it between them and their caseworker. Um, it's really just about getting the help that they need. Um, and I don't think people need to be worried about their information getting out there. It's going to be with the right people, the people that'll be there to help them. So that's fantastic. Thank you both so much. Um, and, you know, Mayor Galvin and um, Representative Haggerty, I know have been involved, um, Metro Housing, SCI, like so many people are involved. Um, and you have an opportunity for those of you who are watching to make sure that the right folks who might need this help is in there. This is a busy, challenging time for families. We're approaching the holidays. We're approaching the end of the year. Um, you know, many people are going back to work. Many are still not in work. And this is a great opportunity for us to bring resources to our residents and to make sure that they um, know about the things that are available to them. So we'll uh, thank you all for, for bringing that to us. Anything else you want to add? I think on my end, I, I actually, we were at the senior center the other day. I think Med, uh, Meg Rodriguez, she's going to show up and she's actually uh, trained to help out with SNAP benefits. So we're really, it seems like we're just, everybody from the community is just stepping up uh, to really help out here. So I, we're hoping for a good turnout. We've done our best to send out the press and beat feet around town to try to, you know, get the word out. So i um, really looking forward to it. I'm so grateful for that. Thank you so much. And um, Jeff, I know this has been a passion project for you. So really, thank you to taking for taking the initiative there. Um, well, we're going to switch gears. Oh, sorry, please go ahead. No, I just wanted to thank you, Samantha, for the opportunity to get on, get the word out. And thank Anthony. He put his heart and soul right into this with me, as well as Mayor Galvin and State Rep Haggerty. Uh, great, great people to work with. And uh, let's get it done. Make sure everyone's taken care of. That's the bottom line. I love it. Well, Gabriel, we're going to completely switch gears. Welcome to the show. We're glad to have you. We're going to talk about you are, and this is a mouthful. So I'm going to read this because I want to get this right. You are the incoming worshipful master of the Woburn Lodge of Masons, Mount something I can't pronounce. So uh, that is a lot of words. Tell us what that really means. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. So yeah, the worshipful master of this is Mount Horeb Lodge in Woburn. Um, and uh, that's that's the name of it down 17 Arlington Road. Um, so what it means is it, it's an elected position. So the, the lodge in Woburn has has kind of chosen me to, to be their leader for the next year. And you know the the fanciness of the title is really kind of an old school thing. It's 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 sort of rooted in tradition and kind of similar to um, uh, your your honor, maybe like a judge or um, in in England uh, they use the title your worship for for various types of sort of civil positions and it kind of it, it kind of is uh, in in that vein and it's a term of respect that that the uh, that that the fraternity sort of kind of gives you when they put you in charge of this stuff. So we are very familiar um, on the show with the good uh, medical equipment lending program that the Masons run here in Woburn. That is a tremendous uh, service to our community. But I have to admit, I'm completely ignorant of anything else. So um, would love for you to talk a little bit about what the Masons in Woburn are all about and, and how you um, have some fun and serve the community in other ways. Sure, sure. So so Freemasonry is, is the largest and oldest fraternity in the world. Uh, the, the current version of, of masonry, I would say, has been since 1733 in England, um, and then over here just a few decades later. Um, and the main aim is men of good character join the fraternity, uh, you know, looking for something more 
um, out of out of their life. And a lot of times that comes down to uh, they maybe want to be more involved in the community in charitable contributions or charitable acts. Um, <clears throat> and also there's a lot of opportunities within the organization for leadership and um, really looking out for each other. That's 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 a big component of, of what we do. Um, and uh, Specific charitable action. So you mentioned the health program, hospital equipment loan program at Cummings Park. Um, also, we do um, all kinds of other sort of things like we just ran a diaper drive where we were collecting um, diapers and baby food and we make donations to the Woburn Council for Social Concern and the Burlington Food Bank. Um, we've run blood drives. Um, we, we do scholarships uh, and donate for do Woburn dollars for scholars um, and other surrounding towns. Um, and and really, it's up to the individuals of all the uh, of the lodge. You know, what what do you want to do? And you know, we we support each other in in our efforts to try to you know, to make that kind of social impact. Well, I love it, and I'm gonna um, you know plead complete ignorance. I think when we think of Masons, a lot of time we think of you know older men um, and um, lots of deep secret traditions and handshakes and maybe even silly hats and things that we might have might have seen. But really, um, what you're describing is a really contemporary organization that serves the community and comes together. Tell us a little bit about the membership here in Woburn. Yeah, so the, well, the membership is is like membership in a lot of lodges. It's it's all different age groups of guys, age groups, backgrounds, uh, religious backgrounds. You know, th those are not the things that really you know qualify somebody as a, as a mason. It's it's who you are on the inside. It's it's a man of good character that that really matters. So so the makeup is you know there's all different kinds of guys. Uh, you know, like I like I said of of all different uh, of all different backgrounds. Excellent. And if somebody was interested in joining or learning more about the Masons, what's the best way for them to learn about it? Sure. There's a couple of websites that you can go to. Um, the, the sort of statewide one is Mass Free Masonry. Um, that's MassFreeMasonry.com. And then there's the, the Woburn Mount Horeb Lodge website, which is WooburnMasons.org. And there's information on there and uh, ways to contact if somebody's interested in learning more. Um, there's a little knocker kind of button, you know, door knocker button that you can click and that, that helps you fill out the form and, and we'll get in touch with you. Fantastic. Um, any events or anything coming up that you particularly want to give a shout out to? Well, we just we just wrapped up the the Halloween parade. That was a that was a really a ton of fun for us. Um, I would say we had maybe about forty to forty five masons in that parade. You know, um, tossing candy to the kids and and just you know hoping hoping that the community knows that we're a part of them by uh, being involved in 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 that. And uh, we we might be doing a blood drive in the spring. Um, and uh, and other than that, you know, it's really up to the members to figure out what, what's coming next. And uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I'd say that's it, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad you did that. And I know um, having recently run a blood drive in um, memorial to my father-in-law, um, that blood is desperately needed. So I'm sure that in the community wel welcomes that and all the other thing good things that you do. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to all of Thank our you. guests today. We talk about some really important things. And as always, Woburn, please continue to take good care of each other.